Hello and welcome to another edition of our interviews with our astronomers. This time we are joined in the Great Equatorial Telescope Dome here at the Royal Observatory Greenwich by Dara Patel, Senior Manager for Education here at the Royal Observatory. Hello Dara. Hey Greg. How are you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. So, uh, I think a good place to get started would be to talk about how you got interested in science and astronomy in the first place. So, was it something that you were interested in from a very young age? I would say that I've always liked kind of science and maths. I've always liked the, the logical kind of subjects where there's, there's a right answer at the end or there's a solution that you're working to. So, I think I struggled with some of the, the creative subjects, I would say, when I was younger. Um, but I never really thought that there was a career that I could pursue in science. So I really liked astronomy as a young child. I mean, what do you do from liking space? What jobs can you do from, from liking space? So I think at a young age, I just wasn't aware of the, the endless possibilities of a career in science. But yeah, I would say I loved, I loved maths and science. Was there any event in particular that uh, made you realise, yes, yeah, science is the thing for me? I mean, I always liked science, so as I went through from secondary school to doing my A-levels at college, um, I pursued physics because it's the one that combined lots of maths within it, um, but at the end of my A-levels while I was getting ready to, to apply to university, I was actually torn between going down the, the earth science and geography route as opposed to the, the physics route. Um, and I think it was my physics lessons at the time that really encouraged me and made me feel like, you know what, it's really difficult physics, but it's also so enjoyable too. Uh, and there was a moment I remember sitting in my A-level physics class and my teacher was teaching us about momentum. And to really get the point across of you know, how momentum can affect things, he imitated getting on a bus and he hopped on the bus as he did, and uh, he said what would happen if the bus slowed down and like, came to a sudden halt. And then he imitated rolling through the back of the bus and plopping down on the back seat of the bus and saying, yeah, I was meant to do that. And it was a really, really funny way of teaching the concept, and it's something that still stuck with me. <laughs> That's fantastic. And actually, it was my physics teacher who caught me in an IT lab while I was at college and had probably found out that I was considering doing geography and actually took a moment to sit down with me and told me about you know, the, the multiple career opportunities that could come out of doing a degree in science. And I think at that moment I realized that because I didn't actually know what I wanted to do once I had left university, having as many doors open as possible had got to be uh, the best way down. So I think that kind of clinched it to me uh, and I have no regrets. I absolutely loved doing my degree at university. And where exactly did you go to the university and what, what exactly were you studying? So I went to the University of Leeds, I tried to go as far north as possible from home, um, and I studied an integrated masters with physics. So it was straight physics, I still loved astronomy, um, but of course I still then didn't quite understand the roots and the, the progression that you could make from doing a career in just astronomy. I wanted to keep my doors open. Um, but I did choose to do all of the astronomy and cosmology modules that I could uh, while I was at, uh, at university. So you're coming to the end of your university degree, trying to decide what you're going to do next. What did you choose? So I chose at the start of my career to do my integrated masters, which meant that I couldn't finish at the end of my third year. I had to complete that fourth year. So my fourth year while I was doing my master's project, I knew that I didn't want to stay in research. I was enjoying it, but I wasn't committed to spending another three or four years on something very niche and something very particular. Um, and during my third year, actually, I ended up going to camp in America and working with young people there. I also did uh, a summer placement the year before where I worked in a school for a short period of time. And I think it was there that I realized that I really like talking about science. So all the stuff that I was learning, it was great, but I wanted to tell people about it. Um, and so I think teaching became a very obvious option for me. So when I finished my degree, uh, I went to the University of Leicester and I did my PGC or my teacher training course there. And then I went off to a secondary school to teach science for a little while. And how do you find teaching? What, what were the, the sort of the, the perks or the upsides and, and some of the downsides perhaps of uh, going into education? Teaching is 
a challenging profession and I have great respect for teachers out there who are teaching all sorts of subjects at all sorts of age ranges because students come with their, their own challenges whatever age they're at. But I think with me, I really enjoyed working with secondary school students. I hate to say it in this way, but they're a very special breed of people at that age. They ask the, the weirdest and the most wonderful questions. You can have conversations with them that are at an adult level, but yet, you know, they still have some innocence of a child and that inquisitiveness that they have. So I think in terms of what I really enjoyed about teaching is that it was, it was novel, it was fresh, every day was different, you know. Some days children would surprise you, other days you'd just be like, I want to get out of the classroom and I want to go home. I've had enough of being in front of a class full of students. Um, and I think eventually that's the, the turning point for me. So it, it changed from being me being really excited and passionate and looking forward to teaching lessons to it becoming more of a political and a very kind of behind the stage of teaching there's lots of marking, there was lots of uh, extra work that I had to do and I felt like more of my focus was on dealing with some of those other things rather than being in the class with the students. Um, so I knew that I wanted to stay in education, I knew that I wanted to work with young people. The classroom environment was just not where I wanted to be anymore. Um, so I was very fortunate to find the role at the Royal Observatory. Uh, so it was the astronomy education officer role that I applied for and I remember when I got the application and I was looking through it and a lot of the things were you know must have experience of working with, with students and one of the criteria on there was about using a planetarium. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of technology, I'm um, a little bit of a technophobe so I almost got discouraged from applying. Um, it was at the point where I was thinking, well, why should I apply? Because I'm clearly not going to get this. But actually, I, I took that leap and I managed to get the position. And, I, you know, it's one thing that I want to share with people that I think a lot of women and even some men out there may look at an application and think, I don't fit all of the criteria. I can't do this. This is not for me. I'd just say make that leap. Just try because the best that can come out of it is you get what you want. Um, so yeah, and I've been here at the observatory ever since, can't get rid of me. And clearly you were very good at your job because uh, about two, two and a half years after you started, something along those sort of lines, you uh, got uh, moved up into the senior manager for education role um, for at least a, a time and you're back in that role again now. So uh, what, what was that like? So yeah, I covered the senior manager role once before and I think the first time round, I again struggled with that confidence issue of can I do this job? And actually it's really nice to hear you say as well that you know you must have been doing well at your job to get there and it's nice to have had the, the feedback from my colleagues as well to make me feel like actually you did do a good job the first time. I think by the time I'd done that role for about a year, which was a maternity cover, I came back out of it thinking, you know what, I really missed presenting because it's not something that you get to do as much in a managerial role. Um, and I remember when my manager came back from her maternity leave, she asked me, you know, would you ever consider doing the role again? And at that point, I was kind of like, I actually don't know. It was so challenging and I missed aspects of my officer level role, the presenting, the doing, the making, the creating, that I was, I was half and half. I didn't know whether it would happen again. And then my manager went off on maternity again and I was offered the position and I did think about it really carefully. Um, but I'm really glad that I took this opportunity again. This time around I feel a little more prepared for the job. And the one thing that I really, really enjoy about this manager role is the networking aspect. I, am, I would say I'm quite an introvert normally. Um, but in this job and in the field that we work in, it's so nice to meet with and talk to and collaborate and work with people in our team, but also outside our organisation, um, getting to, to know people that you'd never get to meet uh, otherwise. So, yeah, I've absolutely relished this opportunity, uh, and I think there are perks and challenges to, to either of the roles that I've been in. What sort of things do you do on a day-to-day -day basis in the, the senior manager for education role? Ooh, it's all mysterious, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Cause because you, because you're a behind-the-scenes role, you're, you're not seen so much uh, uh, up front. So what sort of things do you actually do? 
So as a manager, I think a lot more of my job is supporting the team that I manage to achieve everything that the, the observatory and the education team do. And I think I've learned this from being in the manager role is that it's not so much about your own success in doing things, but you are supporting your team to have those successes and you can savour in those successes when you see them achieving that. So I think as a manager, what I'm doing is developing the education programme behind the scenes. I'm managing projects or at least overseeing my team to develop different resources for teachers, for students. Um, in these pandemic times that we're in, we're coming up with new and novel ways to try and help support teachers and students. Um, and then of course I'm trying to build and maintain our relationship in, within the wider museum, because we are kind of several museums all packed into one, but also with other organisations and science centres across the UK as well. You mentioned that you really enjoy um, the presenting side, the, the engaging directly with the public. And of course, that doesn't happen quite so much now in your senior manager role, and it's been happening even less during uh, lockdown. But uh, is there a, a, a moment in your public presenting that you've really enjoyed, or a part of your astronomy that you've been presenting that you've really enjoyed? I, I know I mentioned that, you know, I am a technophobe and I don't like kind of learning new techie stuff and the planetarium is one of those beasts that when you look at it you think, what is this? What do, what do I do with this? But actually, having got to grips with how the planetarium operates, one of the most enjoyable parts of my job is delivering those planetarium shows but more so the engagement that you have with the public and even students after because they often come up to you and ask you questions and I think the one moment that really sticks out in my head is after doing a school show. Um, I waited at the front of the planetarium while the schools were leaving and this rather um, kind of cool kid, you know, hood up, he wasn't going to chat to anyone, was walking out of the planetarium and on his way out he actually turned to me and he said, Mans don't really like this stuff yet in it, but uh, I really enjoyed that. Or something along those lines and I just thought, for a kid like this, who probably doesn't engage with any science at school, who doesn't feel like science is for them, to sit in a planetarium, enjoy the show, and then even have the courage to come and talk to me at the end and actually tell me that he liked it, I feel like I've done my job. I feel like I've at least sown a little seed in him that he might go away and look up something about astronomy later. So it's those moments that I, I relish. They're the, the cherry on top of the cake. Say that uh, that kid came back to you some years later. He is now decided. He's now decided he actually wants to be an astronomer. What advice would you give to him? First of all, a big pat on the back. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I think with a lot of young people, it's really nice now. I think compared to when I was younger, that. Science is more so in the media. I mean, we're sitting here the day after Perseverance landed on Mars, and I'm sure loads of people watched that, loads of young people watched that. In fact, young people named the rover and the, the mini copter that goes with it. So I think with science being more at the forefront, students and young people are already kind of uh, exposed to science a bit more. And I think the next step is to get students really exposed to the people behind it and to get them involved in the science as well. I think one of the things that really helped me build my, on my passion of science is all the opportunities that I took. So when I was a child um, or at, at college, I got the opportunity to go to Russia. So I, um, I went on this International Space Olympics trip and I got to, to go to, to mission control in Russia, I got to stay in Russia for a few weeks. Um, you know, being around other people that enjoy space and physics and the topics that you like too. And I think that's what I would encourage young people to do. Look for opportunities where you get to, to try a bit of the things that you think you like. And if you don't like them, so what, you gave it a try. But if you do find those things that you really like, well, then you found your niche and you can carry on and you can pursue those goals and interests that you have. Thanks very much, Dara, for joining us uh, for this interview today. And we'll have more interviews with our astronomers coming up very soon.